Thank you for joining us for this sermon podcast from United Christian Church of Austin, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're invited and welcome. This sermon from Sunday, May 18th, 2014, is entitled Pastoral or Merely Pastoral? It's a reflection on a reading from the Hebrew Bible from the book of Psalms, Psalm 23. If you enjoy this podcast and would like to learn more about our open and affirming ministry at United Christian Church, head over to our website, www.uccaustin.org. Thank you. Our reading today comes from the Hebrew Bible, from the book of Psalms, Psalms 23, from the New Revised Standard Version, the biblical paraphrase, the message, and the lyrics to musician Bobby McFerrin's version, the 23rd Psalm, dedicated to my mother. May God take these familiar words and make them strange and wonderful for us today. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. The Lord is my shepherd, I have all I need. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. You have bedded me down in lush meadows. You find me quiet pools to drink from. She makes me lie down in green meadows. Beside the still waters, she will lead. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. True to your word, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. She restores my soul. She rights my wrongs. She leads me in a path of good things and fills my heart with songs. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Even when the way goes through Death Valley, I'm not afraid when you walk beside me. Your trusty shepherd's crook makes me feel secure. Even though I walk through a dark and dreary land, there is nothing that can shake me. She has said she won't forsake me. I'm in her hand. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. You serve me a six-course dinner right in front of my enemies. You revive my drooping head. My cup brims with blessing. She sets a table before me in the presence of my foes. She anoints my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. Surely, surely goodness and kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will live in her house forever, forever, and ever. Friends, God is still speaking to the world. May our hearts be open to listen and respond. Amen. Amen. I can't help it. This is where my mind goes when I hear the opening lines of the 23rd Psalm. Beethoven, Symphony Number no. 6, The Pastoral, First Movement, otherwise known as the Fantasia music. The Lord's my shepherd, 
I shall not want. God makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. The Lord restores my soul. It conjures such a beautiful country scene, something out of a 19th century painting, like the one on the front of our bulletin today. And go ahead and take a look. This happens to be a painting from 1868 by Thomas Sidney Cooper. It's the perfect bucolic scene. A spotless shepherd, pink and pale, not a speck of manure on him, tending fluffy white sheep on a meadow so smooth it would make a golf course green with envy. In the distance, you can't quite see them in the painting, but I know they're there. There's some very pleasant peasants content in their poverty, happy to be out working in the sun all day on land they don't own, probably haying as one does. So sweet and simple and sheepish. Little lambs gambling on the lawn, ba 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 humbug. Or is it just me? I worry about things like this. I worry about the whitewashing, the stepfordization of Scripture, and by extension, our whole faith, particularly with passages that are so very familiar to us, passages that we know so well, or at least think we know so well. And what passage from the entire Bible could be more familiar than the words of the 23rd Psalm? Even if you didn't grow up memorizing it in Sunday school, or from Monday through Friday school, for that matter. It's hard to think of another passage of Scripture that is more widely available to us and repeated back to us from our popular culture. In addition to being the source material, or at least alluded to, in almost innumerable church hymns, we can hear echoes of the psalm in popular music. From Love, Rescue Me by U2, to Gangsta's Paradise by Coolio, to Sheep by Pink Floyd, and Jesus Walks by Kanye West. And of course, these famous verses aren't limited to the radio either. They make frequent appearances on the silver screen as well. And everything from Rooster Cogburn to Full Metal Jacket, from Titanic to the X-Men. In many ways, this short psalm is asked to do immeasurable duty, to stand in for the entirety of our faith. Six short verses of scriptural shorthand for some 3,000 years of spiritual tradition. In fact, all we need to do, right, is, is hear those opening lines, the Lord's my shepherd, and, and, but you know the rest of it, right? Green pastures, still waters, there's a cup overflowing in there somewhere, I'm fairly sure. Blah, blah, blah. Now, who cares about the details, right? It's like the Mona Lisa. Think about it. We've seen copies and images and repetitions and prints of the Mona Lisa a million times. Why in the world would we ever need to go and stand in line for hours and hours and hours just to see the real thing hanging on the wall in the Louvre in Paris? The real 500-year-old, only 21 inches by 30 inches, original oil painting on poplar wood. Did you know that it was painted on wood? and not Candace. But, I mean, you know it enough, right? You know it's pretty. And the same with the 23rd Psalm. We know it enough, right? We know it's pretty. But friends, we don't need a faith that is just pretty. We need a faith that is powerful and real, rough and ready for anything, and pretty if there's enough time and energy left over for it. Because real life isn't very pretty at all. I know that I don't have to tell you that. You know what I'm talking about already. Your lives, our lives, all of our lives are muddy, messy, sometimes straight up messed up. And in general, sad fact is most days, those of us in this room have got it better by far than the vast majority of people around the world by simple virtue of accident of birth. I know that, but 
I want to remind you that that still doesn't get rid of the fact that our lives are challenging and difficult. So many folks come to me asking for pastoral care, and they start off with that apology. Well, I know there are so many people out there worse off than I am. Yes, there are. But your life is your life, and your messes are your messes, and close and hard by your heart. Daily, we all deal with conflict. We deal with confusion. We deal with diminishment and disease. We are dogged night and day by anxieties of every kind, real and imagined. We are haunted by the ghosts of our past and the ghosts of our futures and the terrible fear of the now. Sure, there are moments of immense beauty in our lives, lest we forget. But the shadows cling so closely to us that even those moments come to us in a mix of marvel and mud. And nothing and no one's life is perfect, spotless, untouched, like that silly little shepherd in the painting. I mean, really, look at him. There's not even any mud on the cuffs of his pants. What field has he been walking in? Six inches off the ground? Paths of righteousness, indeed. Yet in so many ways, the church has perpetuated exactly this perfectionist myth, this pastoral myth that our church and our faith are perfect, like that perfectly manicured meadow full of fluffy, sweet-smelling sheep. Have you ever smelled a real sheep? Woolite, it ain't. And never mind that man behind the curtain pulling the levers that move all of those steampunk sheep out there in the muddy field. Look at all the shiny, happy people instead, smiling over gritted teeth, all on edge, lest some uncouth individual around the table dare bring up sex or money or politics. No, Garrison Keillor once said it. People don't parade their problems in front of ministers. They parade their children. And then only when they're suited up in their Sunday best. Now, this image that we have perpetuated is church as still life. Oil painting. Frozen waxy, unchanged and unchanging, unreal, and with a dead God to match hanging on the wall. No, but we persist in our perfectionism, in our myth. We continue to tell people, well, if your life isn't as picture perfect as our church, bless your heart, hon. Well, that's your problem, literally. Now, if you excuse us, we have to get back to those still waters running shallow through the psalm. Only they don't, really. Those waters run much deeper on further inspection. When we take the time to actually read the psalm itself and not rely on the bits and pieces we think we can recall. The world of the psalm, like our world, is far from perfect. Listen to it again with fresh ears this way. I am lost and alone, driven this way and that by so many needs and wants. Come shepherd me, my God. I have no safe place to lay my head. The waters of my life are deeply troubled. Lead me home. My soul is worn out. I am utterly lost. Restore me, God, and guide me, not because of anything I've done or left undone, but because of your surpassing grace. Shadows gather around me. Evil closes in like wolves harassing me. Comfort and defend me. All that opposes my flourishing in life mocks me, O oh God. They say I'm nothing and nobody. Remind me that I am your special guest. Mark me as yours forever. Fill me to overflowing with your love. What goodness I do manage to find seems fleeting, utterly intangible. 
Open my eyes to your unending mercies, new every day. No matter what the world around me says, ground me in your unshakable grace, now and forever and ever. That's not just pastoral, that is pastoral. That'll preach and better, that'll care. That's the faith of a real good shepherd. A shepherd who's seen some stuff, who's been through some stuff, gone through it and come out the other side, scarred and yet whole, really dead and now really alive. Not some goody-goody hallmark hero. And a church founded in the memory of this shepherd and shaped by his ministry isn't going to be afraid to get some dirt under our nails. We're not going to post a sign outside that says, you must be at least this good to ride this ride. We're not going to worry about getting some mud on our cuffs or even wading on out into the deep waters because we are held fast and secure in the knowledge that our God has been this way before. The table God sets for us here in the heart of the church isn't some rarefied Martha Stewart affair with five different shrimp forks where we all have to worry about minding our P's and Q's and lifting our pinky fingers. We are called to be respectful of one another for sure and to be compassionate and merciful and above all graceful as we gather here, not just always so graceful not always so pretty and definitely not perfect in and of ourselves. Now, as followers of the God whom we come to know in Jesus Christ, we are made perfect in God's love for us. We are made perfect by God. In that love embodied in the blood, sweat, and tears of Jesus of Nazareth, messy, muddy love fit and intended for a messy and muddy world. We are made perfectly real as people of faith when we pray for one another in our daily dysfunctions. When we embrace each other, no matter who we are, no matter where we are on life's journey, no matter the mess that clings to our hands and our hearts. We are made really perfect as a church when we go outside and go out of our way to go out into the hurly-burly of the world, to love it into justice and peace, unafraid that we will somehow come untethered from the shepherding grace of God which grounds us in this world and the next. Such a church may not be picture perfect. We may not be ready to hang on the wall in the Louvre. But we will bear the indelible marks of our crucified and risen Savior, our good shepherd, who will not let us go no matter what. Friends, that's why this psalm has been repeated by sickbeds and in foxholes, in dire and dangerous situations, in times of real trial and testing for nearly 3,000 years. That's why these six short verses have been worn so well with use like stone cathedral steps warped in the middle, each footfall turning the prayer wheel, each time around the turn of the Psalms, turning our hearts over again like new earth. Not because this Psalm is so tre pastoral, but because it's pastoral. Not because it's pretty, though it is, but because it's real and faithful and honest and does not flinch at the not-so-pretty parts of our all-too-human lives. I pray that the people out there and, and all the people in here, everyone who encounters us, everyone who finds themselves in need of real grace, may say the same about us as a church in this our real time and real place. You know, they're not very pretty. But boy, are they real and faithful and honest, honest to God. I want to leave you with that Bobby McFerrin setting of Psalm 23 that we mentioned in the scripture reading earlier. Peace be with you, friends. No cheap or easy peace, but God's deep, strong, and abiding peace. The peace of the Good Shepherd, who is the real shepherd.
Hit him, my leader. Hit him, hit him, hit him.